Hello, folks. I guess you are you are all concerned how we abruptly went off this morning when we were doing the show. Um, it was a power issue. Something happened to our generator, but I'm okay. Not to me, but to the generator. Uh, so I just want to let you know that I'm fine. Okay. Why is it thing? Okay. So I'm doing fine. Um. So this morning, uh, the um, the Liberian Senate is supposed to return. The legislature is supposed to return from uh, the break, <laughs> as you all know, by constitution, uh, well, by constitutional requirement, the legislature returns today. Uh, the is it the second Monday, right? The second Monday in the new year, in the year, in the new year, in January. So, uh, but I have just been informed that the vice president, who is the president of the Senate, who has to preside for the ceremonies, who has to be present, I'm told, for the, um, the, the, the hoisting of the flag. I'm told that the vice president has said that she is not going. She's boycotting. And the reason I'm told she's boycotting uh, is because she's demanding her benefits. She's demanding that her benefits be paid uh, before she goes. Everybody's pro protesting. That's her form of protest. It's a, it's, a, it's a boycott. The vice president has to be there by law in order for a legitimate ceremony marking the reopening of the Senate for it to happen. And if the vice president, if the vice president cannot go, it means that nothing can happen. They cannot have uh, the normal reopening. Yeah, you know. So uh, that is the plan. The plan is I want my benefits or I will not attend or I will not be a part of it. And so uh, I agree with her. The president has everything he wants. Uh, his budget is okay. He's well supplied. But the vice president doesn't get any because they don't like the vice president. And it's not about whether you like her or not, but it just shows the bigger picture is how very petty and how very naive these people are. That you don't like the vice president, so you refuse to pay her benefits. And now she has to boycott the reopening of the legislature. Now, has anybody on my live video ever heard about this happening ever? In the country, I, I don't ever, I don't recall. I don't recall ever where a situation like this happened in this country. That the vice president would have to would have to protest for her benefits, protest in this manner, because things are so bad between her and the president. Where are you going, my man? Because things are so bad between her and the president that she would boycott the reopening of the legislature. But I don't blame the woman. You can't be working as the second most powerful person in the country by law and you don't have your benefits. Uh, it's, 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 it's crazy. So... It's not just us who are protesting. It is everyone in the country who is unhappy with the way things are. And now the vice president is has joined the bandwagon. And I stand with Joa Howard Taylor. I stand with her 100%. Uh, she deserves her benefits. I like her, act her action, her boycott pro protest. I believe it, it demonstrates... Um, you're a horrible driver. Horrible driver. 
I believe she has courage. She has demonstrated courage by refusing to go and be part of a, a thing when she's not happy. Man, will you just stop this car here? Will you will you just stop this car? What kind of what kind of man are you? Stop the car, man. So, you know, we're in trouble in the country. Serious trouble. And they have all these problems. Oh, the vice president protesting, you can't see about it. Now Henry Costa, you won't stop from traveling. That your that a solution to your problem there. Eh? COP has introduced a, a new phenomenon in, a phenomena in a country. So I watched this video the other day of a CDC guy, one of those, one of the stupiditions. So I watched the video of the guy the other day, and he was talking about, he was speaking somewhere about George Weir, and he said, Really, what he wanted to say was, uh, George We has introduced a new phenomenon in the in the country, a new phenomenon. But apparently, clearly, the guy doesn't know how to pronounce the word phenomenon. So he went like this. I saw that video. I watched it a few times. I just laughed. It was so funny. And he said, <laughs> "This man, he started all very serious. I mean, you could see the guy. It was very serious." He said, this man, Dr. George Weir, has introduced a new philomeno in the country. <laughs> what? A new what? Philomeno. He meant to say phenomenon. But he said philomena. <laughs> you know. So, folks, I just thought to update you. Nothing happened. It was just the reason we got cut off uh, abruptly this morning was power. Our generator gave up, and we're trying to fix it. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to do. As I said, I'm here. I will be on the show tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the country. It's just been the the man I didn't drive. The man I secured the man. He said he won't drive. That one that one man I put him on. The man I didn't drive. <laughs> Jog on somewhere. I sent a jog somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. But uh, on a on a serious note, folks, we're in trouble in this country. Um, I know the Bible says we should forgive and forget, but I I don't know how I could forgive Ellen Johnson Sirleaf for what she put us in. You know, Ellen did to me the war. The two biggest crimes that Ellen has committed against the Liberian people, to me, her role in a war, her leading role in a war and making this joke of president. Yeah. Some of you don't even understand the, the, the magnitude of the problems that we're in. We're in a serious mess. George Weir is a curse onto this country. Before that brother leaves power, it will not be easy. He will resist he will fight to not leave power. I'm telling you. We're in a mess though. You know, people have this thing to say, uh, the pastor's thing around, I don't know whether Bishop Francis actually said it, but it's been making rounds on social media and people sharing it in people's inboxes and all. That Bishop Michael Francis gave this prophecy, you know, and this prophecy supposedly talks about a certain guy, young, who would come to power, unsophisticated, and that people would... I don't know. I'm sure many, many of you have read it. And that many people in the country uh, would be... would prostrate before him, would worship him. And uh, like I said, I cannot vouch for the authenticity of that prophecy. But... If indeed Michael Francis gave that prophecy, is there's nothing could be truer or more true than that prophecy. Everything we see today, some of us warned you during the elections. We told you 
that these people were heathens. And you didn't listen. You know, when I was growing up, the Congo people would say, the tender mercy of a heathen is cruelty. When you have heathens in power, people who have no moral compass, people who have no sense of civilization, uh, they are on koof, a bunch of uncouth thieves and low lives. That's what they are. Mm -hmm. There's nothing these people cannot do. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I'm not a prophet. Nowhere near it. But I'm telling you, this year will be trouble in this town. And the next time, the next big protest, something big might happen. It might not be even COP. It might not even be COP. COP is a peaceful organization. We plan. We make pronouncements over and over and over and over. We keep telling, telling people when we are coming, blah, blah, blah. So everybody knows when we are, when we are coming. But there is, there is a strong possibility, in fact, greater than a possibility, a likelihood, a likelihood, it's, it's, um, that carries much weight. There's a strong likelihood that something terrible will happen in, the, in this town. Save this video. There are elements at play, elements who do not work in the open as we in the COP do. Elements whose metals and intents or intentions are not as legitimate, legal as ours are. But these elements are at play. I'm telling you. I'm hearing whispers. I'm sensing it. There's a sense of premonition. I just have this premonition. And that there's something terrible will happen in this in this town. In this year. If this government does not stop in its tracks, if it does not recalibrate, if it does not abandon its, its, its ruthlessness, its, its, its lack of civility, its lack of uh, auto disregard for the rule of law, its, its penchant and tendencies of, of suppression and marginalization and witch hunt, if it does not do those things, this government is headed for doom. And unfortunately, the people will suffer along uh, along with it. I pray for peace. I want peace. But there are other people who are working who are not like us. Everything we do is out there. Everybody knows it. We're peaceful people. We've conducted ourselves in a peace in a peaceful manner. But I cannot speak for some people who might be planning something else. There's there's another possibility, another likelihood. Which is not necessarily by force of arm. It could be, and these are all theories of mine, and and, and these theories are inspired by a strong sense of uh, a strong premonition. Uh, you know, you just get that feeling, and you cannot actually literally put your hand on any particular thing, but you just feel that something is at play. That something is not. It's just off. You all know the feeling. You all know the feeling. There's another feeling that one day in this country, sooner rather than later, because of the level of anger in the country, the level of bitterness in the country, which is legitimate, the next big protest might not be planned, might not be even planned by the COP, might not have any leaders, might not have any spokesmen, might just be spontaneous. Something crazy might happen. Huh? Where all these Sabo unit people, the same signs of the world, state sponsored terrorists, shaking business people down for money, doing all this stuff. One day, one day, God forbid, they might kill someone. Either by mistake, either during a torture, you know, Sabo unit or one of these people. The government needs to disband these groups. I'm telling you, I'm talking for their own good. Disband these radical groups, these militant groups. You know, abandon these tactics, these tactics of the of of the dark days, so that you do not by mistake or deliberately kill someone. Because God forbid, God forbid, 
if someone gets killed, either by mistake, either by Sabu unit or the zebra unit or by Sam Sire, openly where the public knows that it happened. You know, all this stuff you're doing, like chasing Martin Colley and chasing Henry Costa. And by mistake, if somebody gets killed, especially somebody who is a public person, a government critic, I'm telling you, folks, this is how these things can happen. And I'm advising them. I'm offering them a piece of advice. Because, uh, some look, it's not a hard thing for a human being to lose their life. It's not a difficult thing at all. A human being, it's not hard to kill. Something simple could happen and God forbid somebody could die. It could be me. It could be me that, that, that they were killed. I know all these attacks and all these threats. It could be me. It could very well be Costa. It could be any other advocate out there. It could be any other critic of the government. Any other person the view has been a torn in their flesh. And by mistake or deliberately, they kill someone. God forbid. Do you know what that means? It could provoke chaos in this country. Real chaos. And we don't want to see that. Which is why they need to stop. Disband Ophoridia. Disband this unit Magilpo together. Siafa no more. Ophoridia. Gerard Powell. They need to disband these people. The international community spent billions in this country trying to bring peace. And, and tens of millions to do demobilization uh, 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 and rehabilitation, reintegration. And you're rebanding these people, you're banding them back together when they should be disbanded. You're working inimically against the efforts, eh? the hard fought efforts of the international community that cost billions of dollars to see these guys broken up, disbanded so that they can go back and try to eke out a normal living but now you're rearming them you're rebanding them and you're giving them mandate and they're going around, General Powell was seen at, at, at Bruce FM on the day he was shut down, he was giving orders what did Musa Din do when he came under pressure, he gave an order for them to arrest General Powell, they brought Powell in for a while, asking a few questions, they let Powell go because power works for McGill. General power works for McGill. Ofori Dia works for McGill. Siafa Norman works for McGill. They all work for Nathan and McGill. They carry guns. Why were they at the scene of the protest on Monday? The Independent National Human Rights Commission said that they were there. What were they doing there? Of course, they were there so that had we stayed there until dark fallen, they would have begun harming people. That was their plan. Why else were, were they there? Why else were they there? Some of you are taking this thing for a joke. These people will kill somebody in this town. Somebody of some rele relevance with some public profile. It could be Costa. It could be Martin Cully, who has been uh, picked up twice by them, physically assaulted. It could be anyone. They could kill someone. And that could set off real chaos in this country. I'm telling you something serious. I'm telling you something serious. Huh? I am very, very serious. And so I say to you, we are in trouble. It's an advice to McGill. McGill always complains to mutual friends. People will talk to him. They will come back to me and talk. McGill say you're trying to destroy him. And you, you are his friend or you are his brother. You're trying to destroy him. I'm not trying to destroy you. I'm advising you, McGill. Sam Sion works for you. I know this personally. You have Ofori Dia. You came up publicly and you admitted that you were giving them money. McGill is on record. Did you all not hear him? McGill is on record publicly stating that he is sponsoring these people and that he said there's nothing wrong with it because they are Liberian citizens. And so there's nothing wrong with, with sponsoring them or helping helping them. You all remember. Mangil said it himself. Now these people are all over the place telling people on the protest ground. And 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 the thing is, I'm saying to myself, what is the international community doing about this? Mangil has not denied it. He said it publicly that yes, I'm supporting these people, and the past government supported them. And 
that was the day he said in that video, in that inter in interview, video interview, that as the leader of this country, I can meet with anybody I want to meet with. You see that? Yeah, you know? So, Miguel needs to be very careful. Very, very careful. Sam Sion, who cannot already go to America because he's a fugitive of justice, beat his wife, got arrested, went to jail, jumped bail, and came here and cannot go back. He needs to be very, very careful. But the international community needs to step up their efforts and they need to contain these people because they are very dangerous people. Very dangerous people. I'm advising them. Do not kill anybody in this town. Stop harassing people. Matthew Innes' murder, which has not been solved, which is still a mystery, not a mystery to me. I know what happened. But I know why he was murdered. Any sensible person would know. Matthew Innes was a director at the central bank with knowledge and authority of the whole map of ex exercise. There were things he knew that they would like to ensure did not get exposed, you know? And so they made sure they got rid of him. That's what they did. They murdered him to, 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 to silence him, to suppress evidence, you know? So I'm just advising them and I'm telling the international community and I keep telling these people, these people could kill someone. Someone who is not like Ines, because Ines was not a political person. Ines, you see Liberians, oftentimes, political people or act, activists, if you hurt an activist or you kill a, an act, activist, you could be in trouble, serious trouble. You could be in serious trouble. You saw the statement from Congressman Chris Smith. He wasn't talking about just some ordinary person. He was talking about activists and peaceful protests and, and Koji doing this and doing that, you could start chaos in this town, which some of us do not want. So this is an advice to Nathaniel McGill if you're watching this video. Fire, if you want to help Ofori Dia, ex Lur rebel chief of staff Ofori Dia, make a farm somewhere in Bapulu County and send him there to work. If you want to help Joseph Nangbe, I mean Augustine Nangbe, General Power, do something, find something for him to go to. Don't put these boys together, these old mass murderers together to terrorize people and put yourself in trouble. That's my advice to you, old Miguel. That's my advice to you. You say, I'm trying to destroy you. That's what you tell people. Oh, because I'm trying to destroy me, and he's my own friend. Miguel, I'm, I'm, I'm truly your friend because real friends tell people the truth and I'm trying to tell you the truth Sam Sion Sam Sion is a terrible criminal he works for the state he carries guns he's terrorizing people he's picking people up he's torturing people Sam Sion went to the airport and grabbed that lady took her to NSA for three days tortured her and released her because they said the lady was the one who gave me the photographs of the video and the, uh, of the plane that brought the money. The money they brought the last time. That's what they did to the lady. Then they fired her. Tortured her. Kept her at NSA in, in their basement for three days. You know? And Sam Sam is the one that did that. Picking people up. People's wives and people's husbands and people's... And torturing. Torturing them. Tort torturing them you know you all need to be careful Miguel you need to be careful this is my advice to you we're in dangerous times oh ha. we are in dangerous times oh the people that are in power we're in dangerous look never before have I been you know uh, I'm human obviously every human has fear in them Fear is, there are many forms of fear. Fear of God, fear of death, fear of water, fear of this. We all have fear. Nobody has a death wish. I don't want to die. Clearly not. But at the same time, what allows you to overcome your fear is courage. But never before 
in a long time. Well, I mean, not in a long time. Have I been this afraid for my country? The people who are running the country, they're heathens. They're like pagans, savages, barbarians. Huh? Don't mind them dressed up like that. They're very dangerous, evil people. I'm telling you, the country is terrible. There is nothing these people cannot do. There's nothing. They kill us. They Never imagine before becoming essentially the head of the country. You never imagine. I'm sure you never imagine that he could kill a fly. But today, because they want to protect their loot, they have money now. They have power. They have all this money or access to all this money. They can do anything. The same way they got rid of Ennis. Do you really believe that Ennis was struck down by a moving car at 3 a.m. in the morning? And then what did the police do? They picked up Ennis. Instead of taking him to the hospital, they took him to the funeral home. Is that what they do? They never even issue a death certificate for Ennis. They never even called the family to tell him. They took the man's body straight to the funeral home. The police did that. Does that make sense to you? And some of you are taking this for a joke because of polit politics. Because some of you support them, so you take this for a joke. Enos was murdered. Enos was not struck down by a car. Yes. Enos was not struck down by, by a car. He was murdered. The family are still grieving. They're still grieving. Enos was struck down. They killed him. And then they pretended that he was struck down. He was not struck down by any moving car. Uh, what did they accept that? Yeah, Gary Bolesi. He was struck down. They they killed him. Yeah. They, that's what they did. They killed him. So I call on all of you. Be careful with your lives. We're dealing with dangerous people. Very dangerous people. All right, folks, thank you very much. I have to go. Bye.